Hey guys, we are in Cabo San Lucas today. And we're going on a daytime cruise. For this adventure, we had to come down to Cabo San Lucas. There's lots of shops near the pier, and when you book an excursion, they drop you off with plenty of time to visit them. There are also people who will put iguanas on you so you can get a picture or a video, and just be aware that they don't ask and they do expect you to pay them afterwards. Now for this cruise, it was definitely more of a party cruise with loud music, dancing, food and drinks, and there was probably about a hundred other people on the boat with us. The ride is up and down the shoreline of Los Cabos, so you get to see the Cabo Arch, Lover's Beach, Divorce Beach, and a ton more. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you'll get to see sea lions and whales. I think we saw one or two whales on this trip, and then we also saw sea lions hitching a ride on the back of the boat in front of us when we returned. About halfway through the ride, they bring out lunch, and the lunch was tacos, rice, beans, and fruit. After that, they call everyone out to the front of the boat and they bring out the dancing. Sadly, it's all the typical line dances like the Cupid Shuffle, but that's about what we expected. They did play a few Latin songs while everyone was eating, so John and I actually went out and we danced to those with salsa before the lunch was over. For the line dances though, they did try to teach us a new one that was way too fast for everyone since they'd basically been drinking the whole day. Now this isn't an excursion where you get to get in the water or really do anything adventurous, so if you enjoy party boats and pretty chill times, this is probably for you. After this, we went back to our resort in San Jose del Cabo, which is about 30 minutes away, and we spent some time at the pool. After the pool, we went back upstairs and we took a nap, which I believe we've done basically every day since we've been here. You gotta nap on vacation. But now we're headed into Cabo San Lucas, and we're going to... Maria Caron. <laughs> I think it's Maria Carona, um, but <laughs> it's supposed to be really great, authentic Mexican food. Also, fun fact, this is John's first time driving in Mexico. Uh, we have a car, so we can take it ourselves and go wherever we want. We're gonna see how it goes. Yeah. Like three lanes hey guys, of cars just, coming in here. This guy's, this guy's in. coming in, babe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hurry up. Oh, oh look, there's the people with the dog. Not sweat. <laughs> I am a game. This is insane. I am game. <laughs> Gracias. Will they just come? They will. What dog like? Love it. Big, big stop signs. And. <laughs> okay, yeah, then keep just going. So, Jonathan, what would you say to the people who might be scared to drive in Mexico? Don't be. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. People don't like, people don't use their turn signals, but you know that they don't use their turn signals, so you have to be more aware, which I actually kind of like more. In America, you're expecting people to turn, and then, or you're expecting people not to turn if they don't have their turn signal, and then they'll just turn anyway, which I find, you know, just more dangerous. We're also not really in Mexico. We're still in Mexico. We're just in Baja, California, sir. But yeah, I would say the thing that we've noticed about driving in any country outside of the U.S. is that. People are more aware but also people are a little bit more aggressive I think with their driving like they will drive super close to another car they will switch lanes whenever they want to they'll kind of just cut into traffic but they use their horns more as a signal so if they're gonna cut into traffic normally they'll kind of like beat their horn to say I'm coming um, so it, a horn's not used really aggressively unless you do something to piss people off but it seems like people are more chill the road rage doesn't like exists here, you just kind of beep your horn if you're going and then you go. We arrived about 30 minutes earlier than our reservation because we'd heard that parking can be difficult in this area, but Maria Corona actually had reserved parking spaces right out front and luckily they were able to seat us as soon as we got there. 
They do have indoor and outdoor seating here and typically we would always choose to eat outside if possible, but it was super cold tonight so we decided to go inside. They do provide little blankets when it's cold though, which is super sweet. The table next to us is so cute. They got this cheese and I really wanted to try it and they let me come over and like made me a taco so I could try it and it's really good. Made the that right looks choice. really good. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, look at that ceviche. Mm, that is a Mazatlan style agua chile, and that is ojo rojo with some little bit of uh, clamato juice and a touch of ketchup. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, to be this one, it's gonna be lightly light spicy. Good to know. Okay, we're gonna go get This, oh my gosh, I really thought I was overhyping the food in my memory. We didn't come here. No, I know, but just anywhere we've been, I've been like, it's it's fine. But I remember just like wanting to die and go to heaven last time. But now I know that I'm not crazy. It just depends on where you go. Like anything. Love the it. soup is so so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, oh, that so is good. my yeah. favorite. That's why I bring a couple of the spoons to enjoy. Oh, we got two spoons. Okay. Uh, Here's your spoon. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy. If you come here, get the poblano soup. It is absolutely amazing. The ceviche was good as well, but we preferred the soup and wish we'd have gotten two bowls of that instead. For our entrees, I got chicken and mole, and John got lobster enchiladas. Both were good, but honestly, that soup blew them out of the water. The service here was exceptional. It felt like we had two waiters who were available immediately anytime we needed something. And something we've learned from our time in Mexico is that they do not bring the check unless you ask for it. In the US, waiters will bring it whenever they can see you're nearing the end of your meal, but they don't do that here. For dessert, we got the Mexican coffee, and this was on the same level as the soup. It is an entire experience watching our waiter create it for us. They even turn off some of the lights in the restaurant so you can see the fire better. Make sure you get this when you come here. We told our waiter we didn't want a lot of alcohol, so he made sure to go light on it, and we love that he took that into account. I'm going to let this play out so you can watch it too. It was really fun to watch and be a part of. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and make sure you come back to watch vlog day four.